The Interlake region of Manitoba is still to this day a place of mystery. Nestled in between three massive lakes, it's an extremely flat landscape, mostly known for its beautiful sandy beaches and rich agricultural soil. But scattered throughout this area are a high number of strange and fascinating rock formations, sometimes hidden in plain sight. Often reaching deep into the ground, they reveal a hidden world of caves and crevices and expose to the surface the secrets of our province's complex geological history. The Speleological Society of Manitoba has made it their mission to discover, research, and conserve as many caves as they can within the province. Okay, I'll just, I'm on the ground. Since starting in 1987, they have documented well over 200 caves, and it's widely believed that this is just the tip of the iceberg. As with the area around Little Limestone Lake, the Interlake region is primarily underlain by limestone bedrock. During the last ice age, this rock was fractured by the immense weight of glaciers. Over time, rainwater has sculpted these fractures into a vast network of caves, crevices, and sinkholes that all work together as the Interlake's drainage system. The exploration of these formations is still an ongoing project, and more research needs to be done to fully understand the extent of these underground passageways. With each new discovery, the Speleological Society of Manitoba hopes to get one step closer to completing the picture of our province's elaborate geological makeup. In Manitoba, there are primarily three different types of caves. Crevice caves, wave cut caves, and groundwater solution caves. This cave that the Speleological Society of Manitoba is exploring is a groundwater solution cave. Although they can be the most intriguing, descending into them unprepared can be extremely dangerous. It is highly recommended that you do not enter this type of cave without experienced guides, such as the members of the Speleological Society of Manitoba. On the western edge of this region is another example of an unusual arrangement of limestone rock formations. Located near the town of Steep Rock, the shoreline here has been molded by thousands of years of erosion from waves and winter ice. This destructive process has resulted in a wide variety of high cliffs and bizarre formations, including a number of wave-cut caves, large enough for a human to crawl inside. Adding to the uniqueness of the area is the bluish-green color of the water, uncommon in the otherwise silty brown Lake Manitoba. Just like Little Limestone Lake, calcium carbonate eroded from the limestone has dissolved into the water, scattering sunlight and creating this distinctive hue. These two features combined have made this small section of Lake Manitoba one of the most photographed places in the province. In the southernmost region of the interlake, this limestone sedimentary layer is much less exposed to the surface as it is in the north. Most commonly featuring small sinkholes, 
you'd be hard pressed to find any significant caves or crevices large enough to explore. But these tiny cavities provide a gateway into another system of underground passages. The perfect size for one of the Interlake's most famous residents. This is the red-sided garter snake, Manitoba's most common snake. Every winter, around 70,000 of them live below the frost line near Narcisse, Manitoba, in a network of groundwater solution caves. When the spring thaw occurs, they emerge from their dens and begin their mating rituals, creating one of the largest gatherings of snakes on Earth. Every May, the event becomes a popular attraction for Manitobans and draws wildlife viewers from around the world. But what most people don't know is that another gathering occurs here late in the fall when the snakes decide to come back to the dens from their summer hunting grounds. For the snakes, getting back home is a long and treacherous journey. Traveling up to 20 kilometers through farmlands and over highways, they risk death from predators and other hazards like vehicles. Luckily, they've come up with a unique adaptation to help each other return safely to the same spot year after year. As the first snake decides to return home, it leaves a complex chemical scent on the ground. This scent not only lets the other snakes know which direction to head towards, but also alerts the younger, more inexperienced snakes that now is the time to start their journey. Generally, snakes are the most antisocial of all reptiles. But here at Narcisse, they have evolved to work together so that no snake is left behind. Although finding the dens for the snakes might be easy, descending into them gracefully can prove to be a little more complicated. It may look painful, but because of their body weight, the short fall onto the hard ground doesn't seem to bother them at all. For the second time in a year, the den becomes a busy place as the snakes gather for one last day of warmth before the temperatures drop. As they travel deep inside the limestone, they follow the same path made smooth by their ancestors over thousands of years. Once inside, their bodies slow down and cool to around four degrees Celsius. Resting in clusters in a state similar to hibernation, they wait until the spring thaw and their journey starts again. All across this region, there are amazing natural features waiting to be discovered. Unassuming on the surface, the interlake hides its secrets well, and many of its most intriguing natural features remain unknown to the rest of the province. And with the exploration of these limestone formations still an ongoing project, 
The next natural wonder could be around the next corner or just beneath the surface. <laughs>